Grandpa Newbie reporting for duty with another Superior video. Has the Superior changed in the last few weeks since my last one? Well, the answer to that is yes, and it has to do with attachments. And one of them I call the secret sauce. I think everybody should be using it, and I rarely say that. There are two attachments, actually, I think, when available, they should be used. One of them is the Jack Cutthroat stock, and the other is one that was just released in Season 5. That is the Paracord Under Barrel Grip. When you're deciding on attachments, Sledgehammer gives you the statistics. It goes through damage, range, mobility, those sorts of things. Don't rely on those entirely because you need to test the combinations for yourself because some of the attachments that these numbers will scare you away from are actually very good attachments and the numbers don't reflect how they perform on the field of honor. I've also heard a number of people, including the exclusive ace in a communication to me, say these numbers are not accurate that there are typos or there are misprints or whatever it is that makes numbers not accurate. One of them that I really like is the paracord grip and I've tested it myself and that's what I suggest you do is test every combination and we'll get a little more into that in a second. ADS movement speed and movement speed all green with no red whatsoever. So I decided to take the paracord grip onto the SMG and the ARs that it's compatible with and test them out. Obviously, I'm not going to test every weapon, but I will test the main two that I use, the SMG and the ARs. I'm going to put a paracord on an example of each of those and see how it does for me. Let's take a look at what it does compared to a bare bone superior in terms of ADS movement speed and the shooting range. You can see that the total configuration gives us a significant increase in our elusiveness over the bare bone superior, which is already fairly elusive. 4.6 degrees per second is a lot of dodging speed. Let's take a look at some of the other attachments that I've hung on this particular version of the superior. Did I say the jack cutthroat, if it's available, use it? It appears to really hurt the recoil, but we'll test the recoil in a second and see if that's true. The movement speed, though, is helped by 8% and crouch movement if you want to count the hairs on your big toe by 5%, but the ADS movement speed 15%. Tax stance goes down, but if you're using this weapon for tax stance, well, there are probably better weapons to do that with. But speaking of recoil, let's go onto the shooting range and see the recoil of this weapon. First hip shot with no control, steadily goes up and to the right. Now let's aim down sight, no control, steadily up, and to the right. It looks like the aim down sight amplitude is a bit higher. Can we control it? Oh yes. Very easy. Very easily controlled. And I always say that the attachments you put on your weapons might change based on the game mode, your play style, the size of the map, and what your plan is, what your strategy is for that map, but also what the enemy is doing. So there's no stagnant configuration for any weapon, at least not in my armory. I have several versions of the same weapon prepared depending on all those conditions. And I need 40 rounds and free for all because the 20 round mag I keep changing out changing out changing out changing out and I get gacked and when you take a look at how the 40 round impacts mobility well it really doesn't two percent four percent one percent you're not going to be able to detect it in terms of handling though reload quickness is down both empty and partially empty as you'd expect but it's only one percent on the sprint to fire and seven percent on the ADS speed so you still have a very quick weapon with a 40 round We've already gone over the Paracord Grip, the Zulu Op 3 Light Barrel, and that helps with the ADS movement speed and the crouch movement speed. And you'll see that the hip fire is affected, but 25% looks like a lot, but it's still 2.5 degrees per second, which is a very accurate hip fire for this game. And we can throw on the Shadow Strike Suppressor because it keeps us off the map and there are really no downsides to it. So let's take the Paracord and really the Jack Cutthroat too 
on to the field of honor, equipped to our superior, see how it did for Grandpa, see what it did to Grandpa's enemies, and see if perhaps it helps you think a little bit deeper into configuring your weapon. Let's go. Oh, that was painful. All right, let's get into this free for all. We're in Cartoonville here, yard, and Grandpa does his typical buy the farm right off the bat and free for all. I mean, it wouldn't be any fun if you didn't put yourself down at the beginning so that you need to do heroics. Look at the, look at how fast this thing moves. ADS movement speed, strafe speed whether you're ADS or hip firing. I really like this map. Sledgehammer has a way of there's another one and a drop shot sledgehammer has a way of creating these really thought-provoking maps really neat maps remember in world war ii they had the toy soldiers that was about my favorite map in all of call of duty playing in the sandbox there we are moving and shooting I'm telling you i played on the stream last night with some really good players there's a Pro player, there's a uh, dev. I don't know if he was on last night for Activision. And uh, they really got me into some lobbies that challenged my skill, but were a lot of fun. Those guys are a lot of fun. And I, if you're watching, I appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate all the memberships that one of you presented to people on the stream. And we'll be out with a video today. Now, the one thing, one change I did make on this, what you're seeing here, is there is a Razor Hawk laser on it. I traded out the Shadow Strike suppressor for the Laser Hawk. Razor Hawk laser. Because Grandpa doesn't like to be tracked by lasers. Actually, in the first Gulf War, the, oh, look at there, obligatory knifer. What a savage. And there, the racer man can't stay with the strafe speed. In the first Gulf War, I was flying in a Phantom. The main thing we were worried about was that the, yeah, we got obligatory knifer, that the folks on the ground, the Iraqis, could laze people. They did that during the Iraq-Iran War, blinded a bunch of pilots, so we had special visors. And... Believe it or not, we put fuzz busters to try to detect lasers there. I couldn't even see. Just pull the trigger and strafe. And it worked. There's obligatory knifer. And there's Grandpa's pixels off to Jupiter. <laughs> and, uh, and I get bonked with a hammer. And then I go into a series shortly of buying the farm several times in a row. See, laser, you can't ADS like that because people know exactly where you are. So I got lazed a couple times by the Iraqis. There's a obligatory knife or he couldn't stay with the stray speed. Had to be careful not to laze. Buy the farm, buy the farm, buy the farm and until I get the enemy back in the game and they're ahead. That person there was a psycho. Probably one of you may eventually meet her in online dating. God help you. Wow. But he stepped on a prox mine. There's Richard Petty, the race car driver. He's retired. I guess now he's running around cartoon maps trying to gack Grandpa. Just three more. This one feels like I've worked. There's, there's Psycho. There's an average terrorist. Grandpa should be able to gack him. Oh, obligatory knifer, who is Elvis, by the way, the king. And there's the 30th. The is Snickers victory, so satisfying. 
I think I need to try one more though, and hopefully I'll get a little shorter map. The Renetti, oh, Renetti, the Superior does great at long distance. Even though this is a high recoil configuration, it absolutely is straight as an arrow. Perfect map, alien guts everywhere. I'm gonna have to wash my boots when this is all done. Whoa, camping behind a mine, but then he gets hoisted on his own petard. Look at there, strafe speed. I think this configuration is a winner. Like I said, I think it was yesterday. Everybody should be using. Oh no, it was it was today on this on this video. Everybody should be using the paracord. I mean, I don't see any downsides to it. It's all green, no red. Uh, das House should be Charnel House. I mean. There is more death, and you're inside the guts of an alien, like I said. I mean, wow. Most disturbing map I've ever seen in COD, and I've seen, oh, he's behind it again. First you wound him with his own thing, and then you gack him. Very fast weapon. And you can see I got rid of the ra laser or the razor hawk. Laser. Ooh, somebody in the typical Muppet places. It's a good place to get a double kill. Somebody trying to gack the Muppet. You get the Muppet and the guy trying to gack him. There's another Muppet. He's not there, but I bet he is there. And Grandpa gets gacked by the Muppet Gacker. You can always, if you need a kill, go to one of the corners on this map because the Muppets love it. Uh-oh. So you can see people, you can move with this weapon very, very quickly, over four meters per second, side to side. Very difficult to keep up with. Sprint to fire speed is absolutely awesome. And it's a Gakamo machine. Serving chips with that Gakamo lay. they are needed to kill to get the mosquito drone so I go to the corner and demuppetize it that was all strafe speed there on that previous gack and that was sprint to fire peace hooya another snickers victory so try the paracord I know a lot of you on the stream turned me on to it I think it was Sunday Last Wednesday or Thursday stream, we stream every Thursday night and Sunday night at 6.30. Let me know how it goes for you. Please like and subscribe. Cheers and peace to you.